Hey everyone, Joe here. Well, I wanted to do a little quick review, kind of an overview, of a new laptop I picked up this weekend. Now this is uh, the HP Omen, and this is a pretty decent little budget, I say budget, gaming laptop. Now this thing still costs over a thousand dollars, but there's a lot of performance packed in this jewel, and I really want to kind of go over it a little bit and kind of talk about it a little bit before I actually hooked it up and started using it. Now, for a while now, I've been using the uh, 2012 Mac Mini, which had a pretty uh, decent little quad-core i7 processor in it. However, the, well, just to be quite honest with you, with no actual real video card in the Mac Mini, a lot of my software, like Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Lightroom, and of course the Premiere, well, just not running too well without a uh, dedicated video card. So, I've been looking to buy a new computer for a while, so I was in a computer store the other day, and, well, I was trying to get a desktop, but when they showed me this one for the same price, I kind of went with this computer instead. Now, this, as I said, HP Omen. This is a budget line, uh, I guess you could say, uh, gaming laptop. It's not one of the huge, uh, over, uh, hugely overpriced 17-inch laptops dual video cards, don't get me wrong. However, this thing does have the NVIDIA GTX 1050 uh, in it, and it's pretty decent performance in this thing. Uh, I'd say I'm uh, pretty impressed with it. If not, I wouldn't have bought it. Now it has the i7-7700HQ processor in here. It has a base clock speed of 2.8 gigahertz. Now this thing has uh, only eight gigs of DDR4 in it at the moment, but the good news is there's only one uh, card slot excuse me, one memory slot used at the moment. And there are two uh, memory slots in this computer. So HP was nice enough to only stick one eight gig stick in. So if you're interested in upgrading, all you really gotta do is just kind of flip it over, take the screws off, and everything's right here easily to get to. All you gotta do is just pop in another eight gig stick, and good to go. Another good thing about this one is it does have the uh, new SSD uh, standards, the M.2 slots in it. So if you want to upgrade your storage, it's easy to upgrade one of those. Plus, it also has room for a three and a half, not three and a half, but two and a half inch uh, hard drive in it. Or you can upgrade that hard drive to an SSD. Now, this particular one right here had the 128 gigabyte uh, SSD in it, which is pretty fast. I've been pretty impressed. I benchmarked it at, uh, just just below 500 megabyte seconds read and write. Not bad, really not bad. And it also has a regular 7, you know, 7200, uh, two and a half inch hard drive in it, one terabyte. So plenty of space there. Now, uh, even though it only has eight gigs in it, like I said, I can easily pop in another chip. So anyway, I got it, brought it home, testing it. Pretty impre uh, impressed with it. Now, what do I have to point out? Uh, before I forget, the HDMI spot on this one is a, the standard 2.0B. So that means it can power a 4K display at 4K. It also has the uh, regular uh, LAN, uh, not so the regular cable for Ethernet, and also has two USB high-speed ports and a regular USB. Uh, I think maybe two or three, I'm not sure. But here on back, you can see it's got some nice cooling fans, nice heat sink in there, really blow it out. And the really good thing is you can really crank this thing up and it never really gets that hot, which is, I'm pretty impressed because that's one of the problems I had that I was worried about was getting a laptop run overheat over on me. And so far I've been pushing it, benchmarking it, no issues whatsoever. It never, never gets hot enough to you put your hand on it and think, man, that's warm. Actually, no, it actually runs pretty cool. I'm a lot cooler than say my wife's MacBook Air that gets really, really hot. And overall, it's not bad. Now, uh, this is a plastic body. There is metal under it with a light metal framing and stuff, but it still pretty feels pretty solid in your hand. Good thing I liked about it, I really stood out to me, was these metal hinges. You know, owning quite a few laptops in the past, you hate it when the hinges wear out or start getting loose. Nice, good metal hinges, you know, kind of helps make you think, hey, it's a little bit higher quality, won't wear out as much. Now, the display on this is only a, a, a 1080p display, basically it's not 1020, but 1080. So it's really nothing huge to write home about. However, it's only 15 inch, and I can be quite honest with you, on a 15 inch laptop, maybe my vision's going out, but I wouldn't want anything else higher resolution than that, and still be able to read it 
if especially if it made the text smaller. Now, of course, if you can make the text bigger and keep and bring up the resolution at the same time, it's no really no big deal. But as far as everything on here, it's a good resolution for this display. Now, I did uh, color calibrate this display, and out of the factory, it was a little bit on the cool side. So after I color calibrated, it did warm things up, but the colors wasn't too bad off. Now, when I did the color calibration, it said the display was only 67% of the uh, sRGB color space, which is a little low, because that means it's going to be a whole lot less when it comes to Adobe uh, RGB color space. However, I got a myth though, looking at the screen and looking at my color cal uh, professional display behind me, it's really not that bad. And it really can't tell much of a difference in there. Now, I know there's a difference. And of course, it, obviously, it told me that it was a, a lot more difference. But, you know, thank at least when I'm on the run and stuff or out of the office, I can do some minor adjustments and stuff. And I don't have to worry about being too totally off. And well, I can always just double check and fine tune them when I get home. Now, one thing I really got this thing for, because I really want to do my, uh, my videos and stuff when I'm out traveling and stuff, which is something I haven't been able to do because I really can't do it on my current MacBook Air. And uh, so, this right here should be able to run it. And overall, I've been testing it out, benchmarking it, and like I say, I'm pretty pleased, uh, impressed with it. Benchmarks, everything, showed the same big, uh, quite performing very nice. Now, there's only one real thing about this thing uh, I dislike. And that, as you can probably tell from looking at the uh, camera above, is the keyboard keys are really dark. And that is really it. Now, they're backlit uh, LEDs with red light, which is really good when you're dark, trying to do some photo editing, video editing, or playing games, that the keyboard's not overbearing. However, the keyboard's etched in red lighting on black keys. And that means like here in the office, just looking at them, they're really hard to read. And if you're outdoors or in bright lights, you really can't hardly read these things. It makes it pretty hard to read. But that's the only really down part to it. I'm not particularly fond of the uh, trackpad. The trackpad, you know, doesn't feel too great to me. But other than that, it's not a real bad laptop. I really do like it. I'm gonna plan on keep using it. And but anyway, that's kind of it for this little quick overview, little quick review. Uh, if anybody's interested in this, I might have to recommend it. I do like it a lot. The performance is pretty decent in it. And uh, anyway, that's it for this video over one. A little quick overview, a little quick review at the same time. And anyway, if you like this video, how about giving me a thumbs up? Thumbs up's always highly appreciated. If you're not a subscriber to my channel yet, you know, please take time to subscribe. Subscribe is free, and it's for you, and let you know when I release more videos. Until next time, everyone, thank you for watching.